Biotech's Biotech. Okay, so let's go ahead and load up GIMP software. If you've not used GIMP before, I'll put a link in the YouTube description showing you how you can download this software. It's a bit like Adobe Photoshop, similar to that sort of logic. So let's minimize this for the moment and open up this folder. And in this folder, it's just got nothing in there really. And what I want to do is download a few assets that we're going to be using in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and open up the web browser and we'll download this picture here. So I'll put a link to this image in the YouTube description. And it's like this, um, all these flames and all this nice good stuff in there right it's like a bonfire so we're going to use that and i want to download some brushes so we're going to go to this website deviant art we're going to download these set of brushes so let's click the download button here this green download button and we download these brushes as well so before we load up gimp we need to install the brushes so let's close down the browser let's right click on this um, folder and extract it here so we'll just extract everything let's open up the folder and inside here we can delete these two files and we're just left with the brushes here there's 40 18 of them in total so we want to install those brushes so to do that we need to open up a new explorer window let's go to this pc and we're going to go to the c drive and we'll go to program files and we'll go to gimp here and go to share so let's just do that one more time it was a bit quick let's go to c drive program files gimp and then share and then inside here we should have uh, where is it uh, gimp here gimp 2 and then brushes and we're going to drag and drop the brushes so we're just going to right click uh, drag them over here and say copy here and I'm going to replace them because I've already installed them so it's going to click continue do this for all of them and then the brushes will be available in gimp now so let's close down that folder and we'll leave this folder open because we need to access this picture here and our GIMP software is loaded up let's go to file new and we want to create an image which is 1020 1920 by 1080 so it's HD resolution we'll click on advanced here and we set it to 72 dpi I really need 300 dpi because we're not going to be printing this work and the background color um, I want to set it to uh, let's just set it to white for now so we set it to white fill with white and click OK. So really, the first thing I want to do is actually change that white color. So let's click on the paint bu bucket tool here and go to the swatches. So we'll click on this top swatch here and just move the cursor right down to the bottom left and click OK and then just fill it black. So it's a black background now. And the next thing we want to do is create a new layer. So let's go ahead and create a new layer here. And we want to set that to transparency here. Transparency and click OK. It'll be wise for us to go to file save as and we'll go to my desktop here and inside here we're just going to call this file the gimp file fire text dash zero one and we'll save that so let's go ahead we've got this uh, new layer let's call this layer text and we need to now let's see we want to click on the text tool here and you can select any sort of font you want from here i'm using this bolster bold weight zero zero equals zero zero one this particular font but you can pick any font that you have available in your system and then click inside of the window here and i'm just going to type in fire text i'm going to type that in capitals and i'm going to press Control a because i've the top swatch was black so i need to click in here and select white color so i'm going to drag my mouse to the top left and click ok now you're about to see the text in here i'm going to select it again and set its size to around 320 so you can see i'm scale it down a bit in size and then we'll click on the move tool and we can just move the text but really i want to place the text exactly in the center of the screen so let's go ahead and use the alignment tool we'll click on that and click on the text itself and you'll see these little white dots will appear in the corner so that means the text has been selected the relative to i'm going to set it to image and then click on this one here align to center and then align to the middle now it's right in the middle of the canvas let's go to file save and the next thing we want to do let's see we want to now go back to our folder and we want to drag the picture of this fire into gimp so now it's going to be on its own layer you can see let's just call this fire uh, let's call it fire let's double click in here and we'll call it let's try that again we'll call it fire Okay, so let's hold down the control key and use the mouse wheel to zoom out. 
and you can see where the fire is placed so if you click on the move tool you can drag it up and down and maybe you can reposition it I kind of want it to be uh, we want to scale it down a little bit so let's click on the scale tool and click on this and then set the opacity down a little bit set it to around it doesn't really matter around 50 60 so you can see the canvas in the background that way when you resize you're not going to resize too far I also want to resize it to around something like around here so I'm scaling it down to width of 2800 pixels wide roughly around that width just a little bit over it's fine let's click scale and we'll click on the move tool and we we'll set the opacity all the way back up to 100 so I want to drag it down a little bit to around here let's see let's see around let's have it around here uh, let's move it across a little bit what it might be worth doing is lowering the opacity a little bit and really what I want let's see around here should be good yeah something like around here so it's down to you really but this is whatever's in the background here is going to be used to highlight our text with this fire so let's um set the opacity all the way back up let's click on this fire text and right click on it and duplicate it so just right click and duplicate that layer now you've got two fire text let's right click let's left click on this fire at the top right click on it and duplicate that as well uh, let's duplicate it now we've got two fires and two text let's hide one of the fires hide one of the text and hide this text layer here this one so all three of these will be hidden and this one here well these two and this one here let's click on this text here and let's see let's drag it to the top let's drag it so it's on the top layer so just left click and drag it up and then we want to go to edit and copy so we want to copy this text and then click on this fire copy I'm going to right click and go to add a uh, layer mask and we're just going to set it to black full transparency so when we click OK we'll see this black square here and what that does is Blender's added something called a layer mask and what Blender is saying is that everything that is black in this layer mask is going to be transparent so you can't see the flames or anything right so let's hide this um, this text at the top let's hide it just turn it off click on this layer mask it should be white around this uh, black square like this and then press Control and V and now you're going to see your text there and we're going to anchor it down so we're just going to click this green anchor button here and that will anchor it down onto this layer and then what we want to do is uh, center this text so let's go ahead and click on the alignment tool again click on the um, this uh, fire text here and we should be able to just center it like this center it like this so now that our fire text is centered we can um, let's see we want to turn back on this background layer so you can have this sort of text looking like this it's up to you you can have it like this but we can add another layer mask and only show some of these flames right so this is one example let's just say that this is one example um, let's go to file save as and let's save it as version 2 save it here and let's go to file export as and we'll export it as fire text png 02 let's go to select file extension as I say with a jpeg it'll be a bit smaller file click export and we'll set the compression to around 90 should be fine and export it so we've got one version here now what we can do is um we can click on this fire text here drag it down one layer and enable it and then you'll get this little white highlight around the edges and that's kind of another version where you can see the text a little bit more clearer right it's not so faded out so you can go to file save as and save that as version 3 so let's go ahead and save that as version 3 as a GIMP file first and then export it as a JPEG file which will be version 3 as well so now we've got two versions let's export that and I'm going to click on this fire text here uh, this one here and go to filter and we want to blur we want to add a Gaussian blur and then we can add like this blur effect around the edges right something like this and click um, let's see not so much let's bring that down to something just like a little faded edge around the edge and now you can see your text much much clearer so we we'll click on the background layer down here 
you'll be able to see what it looks like and I think that looks pretty good so let's save this as version 3 file save as and we'll save that as version 4 actually version 4 let's save that let's go to file export as and let's export it as version 4 as well okay so the next thing I want to do is add a alpha channel sorry add a layer mask to this fire text here so this fire image so what's in the background here but I think what would be actually quite cool is if we click on it and then use the flip tool let's click on this flip tool and we're gonna flip it horizontally so let's click it let's click on the image and we're gonna flip it the opposite way around so the darker side is here and the lighter side is on this side so we're just gonna flip the image around and that's opposite of what is being used actually in the text itself uh, I thought that might look pretty good so let's try that we might as well just right click on this and duplicate it one more time so we've got a copy right I like to keep copies here of my text and stuff like that because if I want to reuse it then I've got versions of it uh, so let's click on this um, fire copy one right click on it and add another layer mask and it'll be black for transparency and click add now you can see it's just a black background so you can have this version there if you want with just the text and the fire like this that's kind of another version but really if you wanted that you could just hide that you, you could just end up hiding this layer anyway right to make that so let's enable this layer we've got the layer mask here we're going to go to the paintbrush tool and in the paintbrushes we're going to select this paintbrush which is fire 04 so when we install those brushes you're going to see these new brushes in here and we want the fire 04 brush and the paintbrush itself we're going to set it to white color and we're going to change its size right so we want the size to be quite large around like 5,000 pixels or 5,000 size brush so it's massive brush right it almost covers the whole canvas we're going to zoom out a bit and around sort of around here we're going to left click once and we're going to left click over here and we can bring back the flames like this so this is kind of like another version let's just middle mouse click here so you can see it it's kind of faded out the flames in the background and then you can go ahead and pick a different type of brush so we could pick um, like this one here this is a different style brush and you want to make them quite large when you do this and you can click here and you can start to bring back some of the flames in the background if you don't like what you've done you can just press ctrl z and you can undo it and then you can pick a different type of brush um, maybe what we'll do is try and rotate this let's try and rotate it a little bit maybe let's see much I'm trying to rotate it flat so let's see a little bit more maybe around 14 is very close 25 should be pretty good a little bit less than 25 so let's set it to around 23 I think will be good so 23 degrees maybe a little bit less let's just type the value in uh, let's type in 20 degrees I think that's pretty good this looks almost like a sort of flat shape right and then you can click behind the uh, just the text here to add the flames back just behind the text like this so you can have this sort of effect as well you can click a bit above as well and then you've got like this nice sort of flames coming through in the background um, with your text overlaid on top so I think that looks pretty cool so let's go to file save as and save that as version 5 and then go to file export and export that as version 5 okay so the last style that we're going to create is we're going to enable this main fire layer the one that sits below here this one and we'll go to in fact we'll click on the one above and in the mode here We'll click on drop down and we'll select uh, hard light here select hard light for this one and then the one below will select it we'll go to the filter blur and we're going to do zoom motion blur and you'll get this effect here like, almost like an explosion right and you can see that here and you can change the settings in terms of uh, where that explosion is coming from so it almost looks like the explosion is coming from here to the side which I think looks pretty cool or you can have it all centered out like this uh, you can click on this tool here the cursor tool and you can re-click towards the center of the screen here or you can just click in the top corner it's really up to you where you want to click and that will give like that effect 
So let's just move this out of the way slightly. Um, we can zoom out a little bit and just see what it looks like. So remember, I'm clicking on this tool here and we can center it out here or you can have the angles like this. You can really experiment with this. This is ready for you to experiment with. But I think um, something like this here and maybe behind this, let's see. I think kind of in the center, it looks pretty cool, right? Somewhere here. You can see the settings here if you just want to have a note of that 0 0.5 and 0 0.58. So roughly close to the same. And then this is the blur factor, right? How much is it going to blur out? So you don't want to set that too high, but you want to give it enough so it kind of gives it that explosion sort of motion effect. So let's click OK here. I think this is the last version we'll create. I like this one the best. Let's go to File, Save As. Save this as version 6. And we'll go to File, Export As. And we'll save that as Fitex 6 as well. JPEG. Let's export that. Export. Let's go to File, Save Finally. Let's close down our GIMP software. Uh, we don't need to save this, right? Let's just click Discard. And then inside here, we can see all the different versions we have. We have version 2. It's kind of like our first version. This one's a little bit hard to read, but if that's the kind of effect that you want, maybe you just want it like masked in the background. You want to share it via social media. People have to look a little bit more carefully as to what's written there. And then you've got this one is a bit more clearer because you've got the little drop shadow, kind of white drop shadow there. This one I quite like as well because you've got the glow around the edge. Uh, this one here looks pretty cool as well. I like that one. But by all means, the best one I like is this one here. I think this one came out the best. So that's how you go about creating this fire text using GIMP 2.10. I'll put some links in the YouTube description um, showing you some other tutorials that I've created. I've done about 50 GIMP tutorials. So I might just put a link straight to the playlist on my YouTube channel. And you can go and check out all the different GIMP tutorials I've created. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I look forward to seeing you in the next DC Keyword tutorial.